we're back. So it's going to be week four, and uh, we actually have a cameo appearance by this guy and this little creature here. So welcome to probably one of my favorite spots in the house, which is the couch. Welcome back to, again, fourth week of doing this. And before we get into the footage, remember, I kind of wanted to take you guys throughout um, just uh, some of my, I guess, lifting history at this point. And um, just kind of giving you guys an idea of how we got here and how things weren't always, I guess, uh, perfect. But one common theme I think you will see is that throughout the whole venture, from year one to year 15, uh, there's always been a very strong, like, a passion for uh, this whole strength training thing. Um, so let's let's get into, uh, I guess, year, we'll say year two and three. We'll just kind of combine those because it's, it's going to make a lot more sense. But uh, first year of, of weight training, again, just fell in love with the progress, fell in love with a lot of, uh, with the habit of just, showing up and I couldn't really ever say that prior to that about any sport um, and then years um, two and three I think what uh, changed or changed um, I think slowly I started implementing more and more nutritional strategies uh, and in a way I'm glad that they ended up happening that way uh, by no means was I tracking a single macronutrient I didn't count a single calorie until my eighth year of, of weight training. Uh, but what I was doing is I was starting to eat a high protein diet and uh, I, would on, I, I would see obvious feedback from my body right away in terms of recovery when, when I would. Uh, so, you know, slowly but surely I started to have my a, a bodybuilder diet, if you will, uh, a few protein feedings a, a day typically. Um, and again, had you told me this to do this from, I think, day one, I probably would have been like, no way, this is way too much. I just want to lift weights. So I'm glad that it was one of those things that, you know, I would I would learn this, learn that, and then start to implement that. So uh, at this point, again, still kind of training things, um, semi-full body-ish. Um, definitely certain body parts that I would favor. You know, the ones that most young men do, anything you can see in the mirror, basically chest, arms, that sort of stuff. Uh, but uh, I guess the big thing was, you know, I started to, to uh, be a bit more aware of what I did outside of the gym and mostly just from a protein intake standpoint, um, which again kind of brings up something really important and something that um, I think often we, uh, we overlook trying to uh, you know apply what is or what we feel is optimal is you know the whole whole adherence thing you know and I think uh, while what a lot of the things that I was doing were necessarily optimal uh, they definitely were within like still within at least at that point in time I was ready to adhere to those kind of things so you know again um, first year just kind of showing up years two and three I think the biggest thing was just kind of eating more protein, uh, eating more protein and seeing that, wow, that's really it's impacting my weight training when I have, you know, uh, three or four protein feedings a, a, a day. So that was a big one. And at this point, I was still kind of playing other sports along with weight training and um, not quite yet ready to specialize. That's going to be next time. But uh, yeah, so again, uh, I think something that you can take from that is that it's really, really important that you know when you design whatever it is that um, let's just say a common one is, is fat loss say you know you can lose quite effectively on 1900 calories and that's going to get you to your goal uh, weight or body fat in about two months uh, but you have a hard time sticking to that then there's absolutely nothing wrong with say doing 22 or 2100 calories and while it's a smaller deficit and it takes a little bit longer to get there, uh, you just tend to fall off less. So again, I think one thing I did really good from the start is only taking on what I could handle. And uh, because of that, I think just in general, and I still do that to this day, I'm a little bit less prone to falling off compared to most other folks. So um, yeah, that is it. Let's get going with uh, the latest and not what happened like a long, long time ago.
All right, Brian Miner. So he's not just that smart dude that does uh, Q and A's with us every once in a while. He's actually also a very, very um, good bodybuilder, and as of late, a really, really good powerlifter too. This was 625 for, I think, six doubles on this day. So he's about two weeks out from USAPL Nationals. We both will be going out there. Of course, he will be competing. I will be spectating and coaching and um, probably help him call many of his of his lifts. Um, but again, one thing about Brian is that just a few years ago, so prior to this offseason, he's been... He hasn't competed in quite a few years. You know, he was already a pretty strong dude, but now he's been, he's like ridiculously strong. And it just kind of goes to show you that, hey, you know, this whole offseason thing, it works. Um, so it's, it's, I hate using this word, but it's been very motivating to see him make these sort, sorts of improvements. Um, and it just kind of goes to show you that, you know, I think for the most part, once, if, if you competed as a bodybuilder and, and you enjoyed, the whole process and, and the time on stage, you know, that itch is always going to kind of be there. And every once in a while, you'll get it in your mind like, oh, maybe maybe I should prep, you know, this year or, 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 or what have you. But it just really goes, and Brian's a good, a good example of this. It just kind of goes to show you that, um, you know, shows are definitely one in the off season. And I definitely think it's probably, especially for, for a drug-free bodybuilder, what is just too frequently overlooked. Um, so it's just really good to see him uh, progress the way he has, especially considering the fact that he was already, I would say, an advanced bodybuilder prior to starting this offseason. So uh, that's been, again, that's just been very, very motivating as I work on mine. Um, Cybex leg press, I actually started using that one because uh, unilateral high, high rep work just takes too long, and I love the Cybex line. I think that's definitely probably their best machine by far, and um, that's what we what we will be using for um, for the high high pretty in intensive work from this point on. The Seal Rose also back in the rotation, and for it, it left for a minute because this gym they got rid of a, a few boxes that I needed for for my setup, um, but I told them that I wasn't pleased with that and uh, they that they're going to make sure that you know they don't send those boxes over to the the CrossFit um, sister gym across the street basically that's, that's where they wouldn't come to find out um, but so yeah seal rolls back in, in the rotation and it's like kind of like the cybex leg press it's like I never left it uh, this was actually a pretty like monstrous uh, PR for me um, this was too 35, I believe, for a set of four. I guess we'll count them now. Um, but this was a big deal. I had been looking for this one for a while. And I think just this alone, for the most part, uh, already kind of makes this training block a success. So usually I run four, four-ish week training blocks. And this was uh, something that I was kind of gunning for. And uh, it happened. So I was really, really excited about that, um, especially considering that I think when I first got here, just 200 pounds for a set of four um, was was a huge deal. Actually, less than that. I think, uh, let me do the math, 180 for a set of four was a huge deal. Uh, so we're, we've definitely progressed. Uh, and of course, we're still doing all the secondary movements, even for quads. Uh, we're still using things like leg extensions because I do think they're important, especially for, for a bodybuilder. And again... Um, there's it's just one of those things where even though I, I they are a strong body part um kind of like my shoulders you know i want them to remain a standout body part because again at that next level things are just pretty pretty crazy um but yeah we're making all kinds of uh, good friends out here in fort collins and that's one thing we're slowly starting to build up is just a good lifting community out here um something that i severely missed i i i, I think when i first uh, moved down here. While the people were nice, uh, the gyms were, were, were great, I just kind of missed uh, the gym and all the people that, you know, I would get to lift with routinely back home. So that's nice. It that's, that's definitely changing. And again, I'm not as dependent, I think, as others when it comes to, I guess, having a, 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 rowdy crowd around you when you train, but just that kind of sense of that, 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 community feel um, you know lifters whether they be power lifters or bodybuilders that are on the same page is uh, something I 
definitely, definitely miss. So, and that's slowly coming around. Um, so yeah, um, here's, I guess, the highlight of the week is I decided to give some squ the squats a try again. And uh, we went high bar and we went high bar and basically went with my old form and it felt good. And I think one thing I'm going to do is just limit myself to basically uh, 12-ish reps. So like do some three by threes or some four by threes with a uh, very low RPE and just try to progress in a pretty linear fashion. And then also, you know, don't get too emotionally attached to my progress or lack of progress sometimes. Because again, I'm already making really good progress, I feel, with, with the leg press. So this is just one of those things that I like to be able to squat so, you know, so I can do powerlifting meets mostly. Uh, just because I, I definitely enjoy being on the platform. Um, and then also another big thing is that I do feel that while the majority of my volume work is still going to be done on leg presses, just because it's more practical, makes more sense to me to, you know, do it on a machine that, you know, it, you're not totally limited by, you know, what your torso can handle, which I do feel with the high rep ranges is, is kind of the issue with squats. Um, I, feel, I, I do feel, though, that, like, the squats definitely, if I make strength gains there, you know, the, the volume stuff, on the leg presses will definitely, definitely benefit from that. Um, so, and by volume, I basically mean anything that is, to me, like six to 15 reps. Um, and again, so right after that, I don't know if it was because I was really pumped that I was actually able to squat pain-free um, and that they looked okay. I was able to hit a, a, a PR on the, the same hammer strength uh, leg press that I was using earlier. Which I mean, again, these are these don't look as exciting, but you know, from my perspective, like I was there for the set. Those were my legs. You can actually, like, I can really, really um, feel how. Again, and I hate to admit that again, but in prior years, I was probably losing reps here and there because of just flaws in my technique, and that's just a lot less of an issue when it comes to a leg press. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, I guess, the weekend review. Um, we're starting to eat. We've been gaining since the Las Vegas trip. And I think I've, I've, I think I'm about two, three pounds heavier than I was a few weeks ago. Um, I think most of that is just the fact that I'm carrying, you know, glycogen stores are, are pretty topped off. So, um, again, this next gaining phase is, is starting now, basically. And, um, you should see, a lot more or PRs a lot more frequently. I think at this point, I can still kind of hit them, you know, maybe once a week, once every two weeks for sure, you know, get a couple during a training block. But yeah, things are looking really good. We're feeling healthy and um, I'm really ready for this next bulking slash gaining phase. So it's going to be slower than last time, uh, 10 pounds at most, I think, and maybe within a year's time. So that's the goal. Good week. I'll leave it there. And uh, again, thank you guys for tuning in. I definitely, definitely appreciate all the support I get.